Nationality Act of 1940 Immigration in the U.S. DACA and DAPA Admission of refugees Birthright citizenship The, the Nationality Act was passed by Congress in 1940 and signed into law by President Franklin D. Roosevelt D. on October 14, 1940. Its stated purpose was to revise and codify the nationality laws of the United States into a comprehensive nationality code. The law established the conditions necessary to meet for one to acquire U.S. citizenship through the nature of one's birth, known as birthright citizenship. It also outlined the process by which immigrants could acquire U.S. citizenship through naturalization and described classes of non-citizens who would be ineligible for naturalization. The Nationality Act of 1940 was supplanted by the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952, 1 2. Provisions Birthright Citizenship The Nationality Act of 1940 codified the conditions that one must meet in order to acquire U.S. citizenship through birth. Under the law, the following individuals were automatically considered citizens of the United States Frowny Face III. Individuals who were born within the borders of the United States. Individuals who were born within one of the territories of the United States. Individuals born outside of the United States and its territories to two U.S. citizen parents, at least one of whom had resided in the country or one of its territories prior to the child's birth. Individuals born outside of the United States and its territories to two parents, one of whom was a U.S. citizen and had resided in the country or one of its territories, and the other of whom was a national of the United States. Individuals born in a territory of the United States to at least one parent who was a U.S. citizen and had resided in the country or one of its territories. Children found in the United States with unknown parentage. Individuals Individuals born outside of the United States and its territories to one parent who was a U.S. citizen that had resided within the country for at least 10 years, at least five of which were after the age of 16, and one parent who was a non-citizen. In order to retain citizenship, such individuals were required to reside within the United States for at least five years between ages 13 and 21. The law also retroactively conferred citizenship upon individuals born in Puerto Rico after April 11, 1899, who were residing within Puerto Rico or another U.S. territory on the date the law was enacted. 3. Naturalization The Nationality Act of 1940 outlined the process by which immigrants could acquire U.S. citizenship through naturalization. The law specified that neither sex nor marital status could be considered in naturalization decisions, but it did outline specifications concerning race and ethnicity. The law reserved naturalization for white individuals, individuals of African descent, and individuals of Native American descent. Individuals from the Philippines who had served in the United States military were also included in the law as eligible for naturalization. To be considered eligible for naturalization, individuals were also required to speak English, unless physically unable to speak. 3. The law barred from consideration for naturalized citizenship individuals who met any of the following conditions within the 10 years prior to their application frowny face 3. Advocated against all forms of organized government. Advocated for the overthrow of the United States government advocated for the assault or killing of government officials, advocated for property destruction or general sabotage. The law specified that giving money to others for the purpose of advocating for the above actions would be itself considered advocacy. Additionally, non-citizens who had deserted their posts in the United States military or had avoided serving would be considered ineligible for naturalized citizenship. 3. The law also established residency requirements for naturalization. It required applicants for naturalization to have resided within the United States for at least five years, and within the particular state where they submitted their petitions for at least six months. 
an applicant had to continue to reside within the United States from the date of his or her petition until the date citizenship was granted. Absence from the United States for between six months and one year was considered a violation of the continuous residency requirement unless the applicant could demonstrate a reasonable cause for the absence. Additionally, absence from the country for a year or more was considered a similar violation unless the absence was on behalf of employment with the U.S. government or an American research institution. Absence due to religious duties as a clergyman or nun was also acceptable. The law required applicants to produce various proofs of such residency. 3. Non-citizens who had married a U.S. citizen were also considered eligible for naturalization under the law, with exceptions made to the residency requirements for such individuals. The law also provided for the naturalization of the children of individuals who became naturalized citizens. Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 Immigration in the U.S. DACA and DAPA Admission of Refugees Birthright Citizenship The Im Immigration and Nationality Act is a comprehensive federal immigration law adopted in 1952. Also known as the McCarran-Walter Act, the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 modified the National Origins Quota System, which had been established under the Immigration Act of 1924. The National Origins Quota System set limits on the numbers of individuals from any given nation who could immigrate to the United States. The law also codified and compiled existing laws from a variety of sources into a single text. Although the National Origins Quota System was eliminated by legislation adopted in 1965, the remainder of the law comprises the foundation of Title VIII of the United States Code, the canon of federal law relating to immigration policy. 1. Background Immigration Act of 1924 According to the United States Department of State Office of the Historian, the Immigration Act of 1924 limited the number of immigrants allowed entry into the United States through a national origins quota. The Act provided for the granting of immigration visas to 2% of the total number of people of each nationality in the United States, calculated as of the 1890 census. Immigrants from Asia were barred under this system. Quotas were not applied to immigrants from the Western Hemisphere. The Immigration Act of 1924 was also known as the Johnson-Reed Act, too. Legislative History The Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 was introduced in the United States House of Representatives on October 9, 1951, as H.R. 5678. The House approved the bill on April 25, 1952. The United States Senate approved its version of the bill on May 22, 1952. A joint conference committee was convened to reconcile the differences between the two versions of the bill. The conference committee version of the bill was adopted by the House on June 10, 1952, and by the Senate on June 11, 1952. Senator Pat McCarran, D., one of the bill's primary sponsors, argued that the law's provisions were necessary in order to preserve national security frowny face 3. H.R. 5678 would not provide us with an immigration policy adequate for the present world situation. Indeed, the bill, taking all its provisions together, would be a step backward and not a step forward. Take no issue with those who would praise the contributions which have been made to our society by people of many races, 
of varied creeds and colors. However, we have in the United States today hardcore, indigestible blocks which have not become integrated into the American way of life, but which, on the contrary, are its deadly enemies. Today, as never before, untold millions are storming our gates for admission, and those gates are cracking under the strain, for Senator Pat McCarran Pre President Harry Truman, D, vetoed the legislation on June 25, 1952. In his veto statement, Truman said the following frowny face 5. Ion 212 of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 granted the President of the United States the following authority. H.R. 5678 would not provide us with an immigration policy adequate for the present world situation. Indeed, the bill, taking all its provisions together, would be a step backward and not a step forward. In view of the crying need for reform in the field of immigration, I deeply regret that I am unable to approve H.R. 5678. The bill would continue, practically without change, the National Origins Quota System, which was enacted, into law in 1924, and put into effect in 1929. This quota system, always based upon assumptions at variance with our American ideals, is long since out of date and more than ever unrealistic in the face of present world conditions. For President Harry Truman On June 26, 1952, the House voted 278 to 113 to override Truman's veto. The Senate followed suit on June 27, 1952, voting 57 26 6 7. Provisions National Origins Quota System The Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 modified the National Origins Quota System introduced by the Immigration Act of 1924, rescinding the earlier law's prohibition on Asian immigration. Under the 1952 law, national origins quotas were set at one-sixth of one percent of each nationality's population the United States as of the 1920 census. At the time of enactment, the law provided for the issuance of 154,277 visas under the quota system. Immigrants from the Western Hemisphere continued to be excluded from the quota system, as were the non-citizen husbands of American citizens, non-citizen wives of American citizens had been exempted from the quota system earlier. The National Origins Quota System was eliminated in 1965 with the passage of the Immigration and Naturalization Act, 8-9. Section 212 Section 212 of the Immigration and Nationality Act of 1952 granted the President of the United States the following authority frowny face 1, 10. Whenever the President finds that the entry of any aliens or of any class of aliens into the United States would be detrimental to the interests of the United States, he may by proclamation, and for such period as he shall deem necessary, suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens as immigrants or non-immigrants, or impose on the entry of aliens any restrictions he may deem to be appropriate, for Other provisions The Act established preferences for certain visa applicants, including those with specialized skills and those whose families already resided in the United States. 1. 8. The Armed Forces Naturalization Act of 1968 amended the Immigration and Nationality Act to provide for the naturalization of persons who have served in active duty services in the armed forces of the United States.